Hello and welcome to our JavaScript tutorial on YouTube. We know that learning to code can be tough, but we're excited to introduce a new tutorial that will make your learning experience much smoother. This tutorial is a perfect tool for visual learners who don't want to miss any important information. Whether you're new to coding or an experienced developer, our tutorial is the perfect tool for enhancing your learning experience. With that said let's try and see how it can take your JavaScript skills to the next level. What is JavaScript? JavaScript is a programming language that's commonly used for creating dynamic web pages and web applications. It's a high-level language that's interpreted by the web browser, meaning that you don't need any special software or compilers to run it. JavaScript was created in 1995 by Brendan Eich, then an employee at Netscape. Since then, it has become one of the most popular programming languages in the world. Getting started with JavaScript to get started with JavaScript, all you need is a web browser and a text editor. You can write JavaScript code directly in the HTML of your web page using the script tag, or you can write it in a separate file with a .js extension and link to it from your HTML. Here's an example of JavaScript code in HTML. This code displays an alert box with the message Hello World when the page is loaded. In this tutorial we will be using Visual Studio Code. Indeed, you don't necessarily need any external libraries to run JavaScript code in Visual Studio. However, if you're building more complex applications, there are many useful libraries that you can install and use within VS Code. In our case we will be using Node version 18. Node.js is a popular JavaScript runtime that allows you to run JavaScript code outside of a browser. You can install Node.js on your machine and use it to run JavaScript code locally in VS Code. I recommend to use the same Nodages version in this tutorial or Hyger to ensure the code run without issues. With that said, let's get started. Variables Variables are used to store data in JavaScript. They can be declared using the let const or var keywords. While all three can be used to declare variables, there are some key differences between them. Var was the original keyword for declaring variables in JavaScript, but let and const were introduced in newer versions of the language. Variables declared with let and const are block scoped which means they are only accessible within the block they are declared in, e.g., within a loop or a statement. Variables declared with var are function scoped, which means they are accessible throughout the entire function, even outside of the block they are declared in. Variables declared with const cannot be reassigned, while variables declared with let and var can be reassigned. This means that once you declare a variable with const, you cannot change its value. Variables declared with const must be initialized when they are declared, while variables declared with let and var can be left uninitialized. Here are some examples to illustrate the differences. In general, it is recommended to use let or const instead of var, as they provide better scoping and can help prevent unintended variable reassignments. Use let when you need to reassign a variable and const when you do not. Functions Functions are blocks of code that can be called to perform a specific task. They can be declared using the function keyword. Objects Objects are collections of properties and methods. They can be created using the curly brackets notation. Arrays Arrays are collections of values. They can be created using the square brackets notation. Loops Loops are used to iterate over arrays or perform a task repeatedly. Two types of loops in JavaScript are for and while loops. Conditional statements Conditional statements are used to perform different actions based on different conditions. The if, else if, and else keywords are used for this purpose. Object-oriented programming JavaScript supports object-oriented programming. OOP concepts such as encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. Classes can be created using the class keyword, and objects can be created using the new keyword. Asynchronous programming. Asynchronous programming allows JavaScript code to run non-blocking, meaning that other code can continue to execute while waiting for an asynchronous operation to complete. Asynchronous operations include things like fetching data from a server or reading a file. 
Higher order functions Higher order functions are functions that take one or more functions as arguments or return a function as their result. They are often used for functions that manipulate other functions. Template literals Template literals are a way to embed expressions inside a string literal using backticks. They can contain placeholders dollar sign curly braces that evaluate to the expression inside. Destructuring Destructuring allows you to extract values from objects and arrays and assign them to variables in a more concise way. Arrow functions Arrow functions are a more concise way to define functions, using the equal syntax. They are often used in functional programming and for handling the scoping. Spread syntax the spread syntax allows an iterable, e.g. an array, to be expanded in places where zero or more arguments for function calls, or elements for array literals, are expected. Default parameters Default parameters allow function parameters to have default values, if no value or undefined is passed in. Modules Modules allow you to split your code into multiple files and export and import functionality between them. This helps to organize code and make it more reusable. This is just one example of importing modules, and the code since the module one does not exist. Libraries There are many libraries available in JavaScript that provide additional functionality and make development easier. Some popular libraries include React for building user interfaces, Redux for managing application state, and Axios for making HTTP requests. This is an example of using Axios to make an HTTP request. Callback and promises. Callbacks and promises are both important concepts in JavaScript that are used for asynchronous programming. Callbacks are functions that are passed as arguments to other functions and are called when some asynchronous operation completes. They are commonly used in Node.js for handling I.O. operations, such as reading files or making network requests. In this example, the getRandomNumber function returns a new promise that resolves with a random number between 0 and 100 after a delay of 1 second. If the random number is greater than or equal to 50, the promise is resolved with the number. Otherwise, the promise is rejected with an error message. To use the promise, the then method is called on the promise, which takes a callback function to be executed when the promise is resolved successfully. The catch method is called to handle any errors that occur during the promise chain. Promises, on the other hand, are objects that represent the eventual completion or failure of an asynchronous operation. They allow you to write asynchronous code in a more synchronous style, using the dot then and dot catch methods to handle success and failure cases, respectively. Promises can also be combined using methods like dot then, dot catch, and dot finally, to create more complex chains of asynchronous operations. In this example, the fetch data function returns a promise that fetches data from the JSampleSholder.typico.compost's API endpoint using the fetch method. Once the data is fetched, the promise chain calls the JSON method to parse the response body as JSON and then maps over the resulting data to extract the titles of the posts. The transform data is then returned in a new promise that is resolved with the map data. A sync versus sync. In JavaScript, code can be executed synchronously or asynchronously. Synchronous code is executed one line at a time, in the order it appears in the code. Each line of code must finish executing before the next line can be executed. Synchronous code is easy to reason about, but can be slow and block the execution of other code. In this example, the fetchUserSysync function returns a promise that fetches a list of users from the jsampleSholder.typico.com users API endpoint using the fetch method. Once the data is fetched, the promise chain calls the JSON method to parse the response body as JSON and then maps over the resulting data to extract the names of the users. The transform data is then logged to the console. To use the asynchronous function, the fetchUserSysync function is called without waiting for the promise to resolve. Instead, the code immediately logs a message to the console, saying that the user list is being fetched. When executed, the code will log fetching user list to the console first, and then after a short delay, 
log a list of user names to the console, since the code is asynchronous, the list of user names is not immediately available when the fetch sync function is called, and the code continues to run and logs the message to the console, the list of user names is logged to the console, once the promise resolves, and the data is retrieved from the API. Generators Generators are functions that can be paused and resumed, allowing for more complex control flow and asynchronous programming. They are defined using the function syntax, and use the yield keyword to pause execution. Proxy the proxy object is used to define custom behavior for fundamental operations, e.g. property lookup, assignment, function invocation, on an object. This can be used for things like validation, caching, or logging. That was brief introduction to JavaScript. With these basics under your belt, you can start creating your own JavaScript programs and exploring the vast world of web development. Thanks for watching.